interesting to see how many organized belief systems perpetuate the track of going into a committed relationship, young, sometimes prearranged, sometimes only with the blessing of thy father, thy son, and thy Holy Spirit, um, and even some other organized religions. It's very interesting to me to see that there's many people that still subscribe there, and if you're voluntarily subscribed to that, good on you. That's, that's, that's a you thing. You know, if you're going not against your will into that scenario, then okay. I mean, I can't really have about that. But I do think it is interesting for someone like myself who finds myself in a, in a spot where I don't know what the hell I want. I don't know. I know that I don't want cheap tricks. I know mm-hmm. that I don't want 92, you know, one night stands. I know mm-hmm. that. I know I also don't want to run up the bank account at five bar and, uh, and bar taco and blow all my cash on frivolous conversation that never mm-hmm. goes deeper than what my middle name even is. Yeah. But it's interesting being mid twenties as we are, I think, uh, to see in multiple areas, people our age that are wildly happy being where they're at and married and already have kids, mm-hmm. you know, my first girlfriend in seventh grade and she might listen to this. And so <laughs> Hannah, much love to you always. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she, uh, She's got multiple kids already. She's uh-huh. 25, 26, Jeez. 26. Um, she's got one kid and is pregnant or has two kids and is pregnant. Mm-hmm. Um, dates a, or is married to a guy that, uh, that went to Georgia Tech. Uh, mm-hmm. She went to West Georgia. Super cool girl. Still keep in contact with her. Don't talk much, but mm-hmm. keep in contact with her every now and again. But she's ridiculously happy. Loves her significant other. Loves her kids. Has already brought multiple humans into this earth. And is very much living out part of her purpose by bringing kids and raising them the, in the proper manner. Now, that's a conversation for a different day because what is, what is proper, you know, right. whatever. Uh, but let's just, <laughs> let's just simplify that and gloss right. there for a second and keep moving. Uh, it's interesting to see someone that I dated in seventh grade, yeah. you know, pulling my football helmet off in seventh grade, trying to go in for the kiss, and she straight denied me, and that was the end of our relationship. Um, if it even was a relationship. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it's interesting to see someone that I grew up with that is living a completely different life than I am, almost polar opposite. Now, that's not to say that I'm out here, you know, swinging Richards and running around. I'm, yeah. I'm not. But um, it is interesting to see someone that I grew up with leading a completely different life and thoroughly enjoying it. Someone yeah. that I have a lot of commonalities with uh, and I vibe with at a very high level, living a completely different life, raising kids mm-hmm. in her 20s. It, it's, it's very interesting for me to see because I think, you know, that is, a, that is, ne- that is not necessarily a narrative that's pushed down everybody's throat. I yeah. think that growing up in the Baptist church, um, that's, a, that's a narrative that's definitely supported. I mean, mm-hmm. organized religion definitely pushes, hey, you need to find the one. You need to be pure. Well, the sanctity of marriage is on your left hand, and the deacon yeah. said you're allowed to. And I don't think that there's necessarily anything negative about you taking that path if you want to. You want to. At all. I don't think there's anything wrong with that in the slightest. But I think it's very interesting, the middle ground that a lot of people find themselves in. Yeah. And even I'm sitting in, we're like, ah, I'm not getting married in my 20s. Mm-hmm. That won't be happening. Yeah. I, won't be having, I won't be having kids in my 20s, okay? Um, you can't ever say never. But... Uh-huh. Um, I do not have plans set forth to have children, to, mm-hmm. to have children be birthed from me. Um, You're not having kids right now. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'll say it one more time yeah. if I need to. I, I'm not. <laughs> um, but it is, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting place to be in, though, because I know that I don't want that. But when we're going into, and I know that you, you were saying that, you know, you explaining about where relational people, relationally people are in the day to day is not necessarily your, the framework that you're operating in. Mm-hmm. I totally get that. I sit more in a place where like, I, where am I going? Yeah. What do I want? How do I find what I want without spending six months at a time, mm-hmm. 17 times over yeah. getting to know somebody just to realize there's a fatal flaw or there's something in my mind that oop, I'm hyper judgmental on or super insecure about. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let me flip that script there. You know, 
It might be, I'm the problem, right? But how do I know that without going down so many damn relationships? Yeah. That's a really good point. You make a lot of good points. And if I try to address them, I think to, to your point, there is no, and I think we started this conversation like this, there's no right, there's no wrong way Correct. to do a relationship. Yeah. There are actions and tendencies that may lead you closer or further away from a particular outcome. And it's good to take the time to think about it. I think the biggest benefit collectively that we're experiencing right now is for one of the first times, and I can, what I understand is modern history, there has been a consideration of does this relationship, romantic relationship framework make sense? It's it's going through its its period where it is being individualized to the unique individual uh, person. And I think what we see in the interim is the consequence of trying to navigate those waters in mass when you have tens of millions of people who don't have that clarity. Uh, and so if you don't have that clarity, you may not necessarily want to be completely removed from the experiences because there's not necessarily... There's some wisdom in staying out of the game until you've given it some thought. But then, as you said, how are you supposed to get any more information, meet more people, have more experiences, which can greatly inform your perspective without getting out in the field? And so uh, I think it's up to ultimately each individual, right, to try to take an inventory of where they're at. And so that could start as simply as considering, because I, I grew up with a friend and uh, at one point in time, you know, we, we kind of had a little thing going. And, and this was in college, so it wasn't seventh grade, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> so stakes in some ways are a little bit higher, you know. Yeah. Momentary decisions can bring about a lifetime of consequences, you know. And good and bad, right? But as we were growing up, there was kind of this running joke of like, damn, so-and-so always got a boyfriend. Like, she just broke up with a nigga. And she got another boyfriend. It hasn't even been 30 days sort of thing. And so only reason I bring that up is because let's say you're this person, right? You're listening. Has that person ever stopped to notice that there's a pattern of never having spent time by themselves, not trying to be in a relationship? I had to ask myself this question. You know, the person I'm with now, there was a lag time of a few months, but it's not like I took years off from my, my, my prior relationship, which was years long. So I had to stop and ask myself, damn, am I rushing? I mean, everybody's heard about rebounds, that sort of thing. But I think the reason that rebounds are frowned upon uh, is because generally there is some collective perspective that bouncing from one situation, relationship, dynamic, where you're literally interacting on a regular, probably daily basis with a whole other human being that has their own set of emotions, goals, Dreams, hope, fears, family, relationships, friends, group. You have to basically ingratiate yourself in that entire ecosystem or you probably wind up doing that to some degree if you're involved with this person. And so if that involvement ceases or ends, terminates, to pull yourself out of that whole vortex is a lot to go through because in some ways you may be losing parts of what are in there. And that whole little dynamic, that microcosm, I do believe is a part of why we have seen historically a lot of people stay in relationships that maybe they shouldn't be in is because they're not thinking about if the relationship ends, they're considering more heavily all the other things that will be lost, quote unquote, if they're detached from that person, because they may get plugged out of that vortex, removed from it, which they may have enjoyed some benefits of people in, what have you. But what we see today, to your point, how do you figure that out? I think the first step is that whether it means somebody has to figure it out by themselves, but you don't necessarily have to do that. You can be doing this while you're dating people. You can be doing this while you're courting people. You can be doing this while you're in a long-term relationship. There has to be thought and consideration given to what does an individual want, right? And it's hard to know what you want if you don't know who you are and where you're at because those things change over time. The type of woman that I wanted... <laughs> When I was in, it's just funny saying that, <laughs> middle school, right? The type of girl that I wanted in middle school is not necessarily the same sort of woman I'm pursuing now. And I think that's a great thing. Because if your taste haven't changed, either you had exquisite taste as a youngin, you know, or you haven't matured very much. And I think that sometimes it's very easy to get caught in the hustle and the bustle because if you're constantly dating people, if you're constantly, you know, you go on a date, oh, it was trash. I didn't, we didn't click. We didn't vibe, whatever. You're, you can immediately, before the date's even over, you got people shopping for the next option. And if somebody's to do that, it disincentivizes an individual to spend effort working on that particular situation. Because the truth is, 
There's never a perfect relationship. There's never the perfect person for any individual, right? No one person, and I had to, I had to hear this, you know, and understand it and not take it personally. No one person is going to fulfill every single checkbox or desire of anybody. And somebody, you, there has to be the acknowledgement of that and the acceptance and recognizing that is okay. Because if you go into a relationship and I've, I've kind of been in this situation before and you put that pressure on the, on the counterparty, on the partner there, it can ultimately end in more harm than good because too much of a burden is placed on it. Almost too much importance is placed on it, which may sound paradoxical that somebody could be in a long-term relationship, working their way towards marriage or whatever that looks like for them, and then make sure that they don't put too much importance on that other person. Because if you do that, then that can be where a lot of, you find a lot of people who are incomplete themselves, pairing with other incomplete people. And as you know, anything times less than one is less than one. So that's why, in my opinion, the, the bedrock of that is doing the work. And I believe it's a task that is done until one transcends this plane. But to do that work of figuring out who am I right now, where am I at right now, gauging that to the future. Because if you, you know, and then saying, all right, with that understanding, what do I seek? What do I need? What will fulfill the role? What purpose am I trying to serve by finding a partner, by dating casually, by being polyamorous, whatever that box is? Like you said, there's a lot of different ways to eat the chickpeas these days, right? But to me, that, that's a logical place to begin to wind up arriving at the solution, the answer faster. 